So good evening once again, ladies and gents, and welcome to the Battlefield 4 EMS1 group stage. We are into Group B. This is the second day, and I'm once again joined by the ever-delightful Jason Kaplan. How are we doing? Why do you always say ladies and gents? Why is it gents and ladies? I mean, we're all equal. I mean, why, why do women always come first? I'm really curious. But I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. <laughs> I just, always I a pleasure, know. Jason. That thing always is, it just came pleasure. to my mind right when you said I was really curious, like... About that. But anyways, we have some battle action coming your way today. Well, we hope so, at least. We hope so. If we get yeah. over all the <laughs> stupid comments that I'm making. Yeah, we, we worry about Jason, but we try and glaze over it most of the time. And just to give you a reminder of the seasonal rankings here, let's dive into that one straight away, because as we mentioned, a lot of Battlefield 4 action not too far away. So checking in once again with this Fnatic, UMav, Epsilon, and Against All Authority, your top four. And we will be seeing one of those teams against All Authority today in Group B. Exaquo, ESC, and Pyrogen will be joining them. So a lot of great teams, a lot of teams with a lot of potential as well, really looking good in this one. And, and this is one of the groups that I don't think people were really able to predict. You know, you've got Exaquo in there who did quite nicely, finishing in eighth, really picking things up towards the later stages of the uh, cups that went on. Cup one had a bit of a shaky start, but certainly kind of mold things over towards the end and ESC same can be said certainly improved towards cup number three but we didn't see them in cup number four yeah this is the group to me as we're talking about yesterday that you really don't know who's gonna get through out of the three teams that isn't against self authority I mean you, you expect them to go through since they won cup number three they're looking really strong towards the end of yes. the entire season but these other three teams they're they're matched pretty equally yeah they're different on the standings obviously but they're all so close within points that it's really, it's really too hard to tell who's going to be the better team. Oh, it, it certainly is. It all comes down to just who's better on the day these days. Yep. And, you know, against all authority, depend on two very strong players as well to not necessarily carry them, but to certainly give them a bit of an edge. Uh, all eyes on Drunks and Raiden Raiden. in that one. So have to see how they're playing today. If they're not turning up, if they're not hitting those shots, then it could spell trouble for them. But we can only wait and see. As we won't be watching them in the first game. We're going to pick it up with ESC and Exactquo. But to remind you of the entire groups that are going on, we can throw that up for you because it's not only today that has the action, we've got two more days after this of more Battlefield 4. We've got Group C with the incredible UMAV in there, Meech and Makers as well, but you cannot write out C-Play or M Faculty, two very strong German sides. It'll be hard to keep uh, a little bit of prediction on that one, and Group D as well. Epsilon, Gamers Connection, Planet Key, Eyeball, there's certainly a lot of teams who could really be pushing to get themselves secured towards the offline finals. I can't wait for this one. Um, certainly looking forward to the next two days as well. But let's look at the bracket today, because that's what we really care about, and it's who we'll be seeing first of all. So ESC up against Exaquo. What are your thoughts towards this? Honestly, it's kind of uh, probably one of the closest games we're going to see today. I think this one, versus, and then also seeing ESC versus Pyrogen, if that one does come to light a little bit later on today, is going to be one of the closest. Uh, honestly, I don't know too much about both those teams in terms of, yeah, we've cast them before, but I don't know their, their style really down to a T. I don't really know what they're going to uh, be able to pull out for this one, but the map we're actually going to be using is Zava, Dawnbreaker, and Lang King Dam. So that's going to be the three maps for this one. And we're going to be kicking this one off on Zava. And I think we actually already are underway in this game, too. Well, let's dive yeah. uh, straight into game as soon as possible there, actually, because we do not, not want to miss a moment of the action. We know what Zavod's like. It can be all determined very quickly. So hopefully we can jump into game nice and quickly on this one. I do believe it'll be the US side being Exaquo and the Russian side being ESC. Why don't you take me through the start here? All right, well... As we can see off the bat, we do have uh, pretty much them both contesting on the C site right off the bat. And we have a big fight happy to be kind of what you expect out of Zavon. Uh, but we do have ESC locking down C. Actually, in the meantime, our contestant over at A at the same time. And it's a little bit sporadic at the moment because we are just starting this one off. But it's interesting to see how ESC is kind of working around this game so far. Yeah, and both teams very set on getting that C site in hand. We're seeing the exchange going through right now. Kazam and Jansen, I believe, will be trying to hold that one off with a good couple of players heading over there. You can see on your screens right now. And they're actually breaking through. This hasn't been a full two to one hold yet. And it's not been the ideal hold in any way, shape, or form. At the moment, ESC are retaining that two to one. So they have C, they have A. But you want that CB hold. This free cap's so hard to use. Sorry. I was trying to use a little bit more free cap. We're trying to experiment a little bit with how we're doing the observing. But right now, just like you said, they're able to lock down C. A, that's not the exact two you want to really go for. You want to be able to control B here, but right now I don't think ESC really cares as long as they just get those two points and get that early lead. Because in this, you know, best of three format that we're going with, where they play, uh, you know, each have on either side, getting this little bit of start to this whole series can really give you uh, that motivation, a little bit of morale boost that you need. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to see how exactly now kind of 
challenge themselves because they do have A and B, which really hard to lock down. They don't quite complement each other. We're already seeing the cap being turned over by ESC. They'll be picking up that A site just any second now, but the respawns coming in for Exaqua are ideal for that C site. So that's where the main action's going down, and they have the advantageous numbers, so they should be able to lock this one out. They pick Explo up, I think is his name, and they should be able to get this one, and they will be Picking up the BC hold, which is ideal. They already have a player set up on B. So if he can stay alive, I think he's just been taken down. But they're looking like they want to hold this one. They're in a good position to do so if they can play safety games now. Speaking of these teams real quick, since we have a little bit of time at the, at the beginning of this, let's introduce you to both those teams, just kind of tell you who's going to be on the rosters and who you're going to be seeing throughout this first match tonight. We have Jansen, XPLO, Doobie, Lagster, and Kazam over on ESC side. And over for Exequeo, we have Seo, Mip. You know what? Why don't you, why don't you do that team? I'll let you, let you do half of them. Oh, thank you, dude. <laughs> I, I, I think you can see it. If you press down tab, I get, you'll I get see stuck on guys. one name, and I'm just instantly like, abort, abort. But <laughs> uh, Missyik, Zordon, Silver, and Blade. And as we see right now, you see, they're actually not leading currently, as we do have Exequo over or surpass them and actually getting a tri cap here and i want to control i want to watch uh, what's happening over at a because we see one man actually they're defending against it the flag is actually currently being turned over and there's gonna be two minutes stop here i'm not sure who that is off the top of the bat but at least say he goes down and they are flaking in for the backside in the meantime they do get the one kill if they can pick up this one as well this might open up a tri cap yet again but they do get the kill ec is going to lock that one down and they're going to take control of a yet again yeah and now they're looking to control b as well they've got two players in a great position here i think it's jansen and lags are actually trying to just contest on this and they're holding back the opponents now and they're actually doing quite nicely from this. They may be able to pick up that C site if they fancy it, if they really want to push, but they look like they want to hold on to B, but they're going to be outnumbered there, so it might not be the best option. And already they're eye you know, eyeing up that C site. They're getting the respawns there. They're leaving Jansen to keep these guys busy. If he goes down, it's not the biggest deal in the world. Wow. Obviously, you know, you want to stay alive, and he was doing good damage there, but now they have an AC hold. But they need to be worried about that spawn coming in for Exacro. I think Zordon just got it, so he could be getting some respawns towards him, and they could be you know, challenging down this A site quite easily. But it seems as though ESC are fairly comfortable with this A site, but they are losing out on it as they did get Kazam taken out there as he's the only player really challenging. So they need to start eyeing back up that B site and go for that, you know, CB hold. And one thing that's really going to affect uh, the pace of this game, at least in the first half, is look at Exacrio's lineup. They're missing a man. And it's really unfortunate when it happened. They uh, unfortunately did drop one here, so it's going to be in a 5 and 4 situation. But what's more important is that they're holding a 2 calf against ESC with this. They are doing a fantastic job of, even though being a man behind, able to hold on to the tickets for as long as possible, wait for that man to get that respawn, or that, well, the reconnect, I guess is a better term to use for this. But right now, you see, taking advantage, they do have that 2 cap here. And Jansen, he's actually. This is an interesting position if you, if, if you see where he is. He's kind of playing really far outside of B. He was the man to kind of sit and be in distract for the longest of times. But he's starting to work towards A here. And it looks like ESC, they want to close out on this tri cap. Yeah, they certainly do. And they are doing just that. Exact flow has pushed in towards the A site. So looking pretty hungry for that one. But at the same time, Exact have gone in for the C. So there will never be a tri cap coming from this. But they're certainly giving it a good try. Lagza and Jansen now coming back towards that C site to try and do damage control. But two sites up for grabs here. ESC looking like they're going to be getting that BC hold. And well, Exact just have A now. So they're going to have to look for another option here. Playing with four members really coming into effect. They're going to find it hard to break down that C site with you know one member left to really attack it with. Yeah, and, and, it, and right now, ESC is just kind of out-aiming them as well. I mean, if 31 to 25 in kills, they're doing a fantastic job of just keeping that one up. And we saw yesterday how important it is, or it can be, to just have your aim on par. If we think back to Ding Toss in the games yesterday, they looked amazing um, in their first set when they played against Yoki. And fortunately, well, fortunately for them, they actually ended up uh, qualifying and getting to the offense finals coming up March 1st and 2nd. But right now, Exactly does have Seiya reconnected. They do have their five men. They're only 20 tickets behind. It's not impossible to come back from this, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to make this work. No, it's certainly not, but they are set up now in the ideal position. They've got Dewey kind of pushed out towards A, watching the cross, spotting anyone splitting towards B, but they are getting broken through on that C side. Blade has done the damage, taking down Jansen, and he's got support with Zordon and Misek just watching over mid, slowly edging in. Lagza and Kazam both respawning now, going to try and make a bit of a stand here, but that site is being capped over. It's a 3v2 in favor to Exacuo, so these guys should be able to lock this one down, and Unless Lagza can do something absolutely incredible. He's trying to do what he can, maybe trying to get a cheeky little pick, but he's been taken down. And we are going to see Exacro walking away with at least the C site, and they've got a good chance to get A as well, unless Jansen can get to safety and get some respawns. Right now, you see two men of ESC actually defending onto A right here. I wonder if they can hold on to this one because Exacro has been 
trying to fight back here. There's still only 20 ticks behind, and they haven't really been letting this lead slip away, or I guess the deficit grow larger uh, against ESC currently. And it looks like they will be able to maintain a little bit of cap that went back over. In the meantime, they actually might cap over B at the same time. So exactly, is going to get that tri cap here, and this is getting really dangerous for ESC, where they could even pull this off against them. And exactly before they lost Sayo, they had that tri cap on them. Yeah, they are looking good as well. They may have just given up B for a second, but they're still in a really strong position throughout the map to challenge and really make it hard work for ESC to break back through. They have two players on towards C, now three, leaving Zordon to rotate through mid and try and lock down any sort of A push. And right now, it's, it's working. They are holding these guys back. They're picking up the kills, and they're holding down this two-to-one, and this is exactly what they needed. They're not allowing that back spawn to come in or any respawns, ideally, for the ESC side, but finally, that mid section has been won over by ESC, so they might be able to convert this but Sayo holds on with a nice shot and already we're seeing them go back for that triple cap. Yeah, it looks like that one-on-one -on -one we saw happen at B it works out in exactly his favor and it's, sort of, it's really uh, kind of unfortunate that no one else was there to defend against that B push. They get that tri-cap down and ESC, what are they going to do off this? And you can see them, they're kind of split. They have two men over at A, they have one man at B, one man at C. They're trying to test whether Izakuo has a man at each of these flags. And unfortunately for them, they do have someone there and they're going to lose out on these duels. They lose out on over on C. And right now they lose out, or actually they do actually win out at B. So they're going to get at least one flag back here. But it's very dangerous and the tickets it's still not that far between each other. No, really close stuff between these two. It's been quite a quick action game. No one really breaking either way and holding down a massive tri-cap or a two-to-one for an extended period. But we are seeing slowly but surely ESC finding their footing again with at least a two-cap hold in this one. So picking up that A site and B. We are seeing a little bit of a breakthrough by C as well, which has allowed the likes of Kazam to come around and put some pressure on here. Because he's seen the overcommittal almost of exact quote towards A. So they could be doing some real damage this time, ESC. Yeah, they're going to get the C cap here, and this was going to give them a nice little bit of a two cap. In the meantime, A is actually being tested back over Exaquio here. And this is kind of, I don't know, this is really weird for me to see the game this close at this stage in the game, considering what happened earlier on with Exaquio losing that man. I would have thought EC would have been able to get a way bigger lead here and would have been able to hold on to it, um, you know, having that advantage. But right now, Exaquio is kind of showing that. Well, they were one of the core teams here at the MS1 series for this, and they're proving it. Why? Yeah, they certainly are. So 33 to 42 at the moment. Exact quote, sitting fairly comfortable, but not to a huge extent. As you said, bearing in mind, ESC only had four players for a small amount of time. It's, it normally is a bigger thing, but at the moment, we are seeing that triple cap coming in for Exact quote. They are looking very strong now, slowly but surely making this a bit painful for ESC, whose tickets are dropping down quite quickly, down to 20 already. And we do see this nice little setup across the map once again for Exact quote, not allowed allowing that back spawn towards A to come in for ESC, and they're just mowing them down. Winning the exchanges is allowing them this, but they have just lost out on one on C, and that could spell trouble. I mean, you see they're running in with two men. They actually do pick up those three kills uh, with, with three men not losing really anyone right there. They're going to lock down this flag here, but it might, be just, it might just be a little bit too late. But then they have enough resources right now. If they hold on to this, they can actually come out of the half with the lead if they can pull this one off. And right now they're still split up quite far across the map. You see them going for an attack on A, but look at this four-man squad coming in at C. This could be very, very bad. Yeah, but it's all dependent on now the set up they can leave see they shouldn't challenge for that on this they can have this two to one hold and try and just make sure they don't lose anything else but zordon seo and blade are pushing across towards that b site from c the site has gone over now into the hands of the uh, exact quote on c but they're holding the back now they're picking up the kills they're minimizing the damage but they need to win these one-on-ones kazam is doing great work they're picking up almost two back to back but respawns now will be a huge factor and they've been overrun by that b site they really have and this does at least give them quite a few tickets here. We're actually looking at potentially a sub-10 ticket lead for whatever team really locks yep. this one down, but exactly going to be able to get, maintain control of B here. Where is ESC going to fight off this? And they're actually going to head over towards C. In the meantime, they're going to get the switch over here in just a second, and I wonder if they're going to be able to hold this long enough as Silver coming from the backside does cap over A. In the meantime, he's going to be working towards C, getting some respawns on top of him, and they realize they're just going to hold on for a little bit longer here, and they can't come out of this with a slight lead, and they're actually being taken down one by one. Both teams here dropping. Exactly was still fighting out for this one as you see ESC trying to hold on to it. They do get See, they do get B, and you see they can pull off a leisure. They can come into the second half with with a, a slightly so be it you know nine or whatever, but. That's a lead nonetheless. And look how far back the spawns are for Exacto. They are in trouble here. They have to do one more push. This is all the time they have. Respawns are not an option now. And there we go. Blade's already been taken down. We've seen Silver dropping too. Exacto are in serious trouble. They are about to lose out on this one, or at least on the first half. And eight tickets not, might not seem like much, but in a game this close, that's exactly what the ESC side needed. There's a lot of ease in today's show for this <laughs> one. But yeah, eight point lead here. And I don't know how you feel about this, but I am honestly not convinced by ESC on that one because they had a man advantage for such a long time. 
and yet they only came out with a nine point lead or eight point lead, sorry. Yeah, but uh, I do want to point out Exacto weren't playing your normal Zavod. They were playing quite a weird style to it. They were holding A and C and being fairly our, uh, comfortable with it. That was a weird sound coming through there, but it's all sure cool. What that was. Uh, <laughs> but no, they're holding a really weird way of doing it. They're, they're happy with A and C. They weren't always just going straight out for B, and it might may have put E and C off a little bit. I wonder if Exacto, the tri they kept pulling off, or they kept going for, was like a desperation move, or if yeah. it was like a overconfidence move. Because they would get the tri-caps, they hold on to them for a long enough time, but ESC just eventually were able to lock down flags against them and really kind of still hold on. Yeah, ESC were just kind of like brute forcing their way through that yeah. C site. It was, you know, the likes of Kazam sitting on 21 to 15. You can kind of tell why they were being able to win out those really important one-on-ones. It was doing great work when they had that 3-2 setup. Um, across the different sites, and it was just two of them on that C-section. He did some really good stuff there, pushing out to mid and making it hurt. But it was a very unusual Zavod. It's not the normal setup. We didn't see an extended BC hold for a long, long time. It was mostly going, you know, A was certainly in rotation a lot more than we normally get. So I'll be interested to see how this one gets played out, because we will be having uh, ESC this time starting on the US side, so they get the more southern start in this. And in the north, it will be exactly once again to the server. I'm not sure if they're all spawning in on this one just yet, so maybe another restart. But still 20 seconds to go, but eight tickets is not a lot either way you look at it. It really isn't, considering how this game was back and forth constantly throughout the entire time. And Right now, I want to see which team can really pull this one off. Obviously, it's only the first map in Special 3. We will be going to Dawnbreaker. I'm just give a little bit of history on this map as well. Uh, this map was chosen by ESC, where they are currently four for six on it, and mm. exactly a one and three on it. Or one, four, three on it, I guess is an easy way to say <laughs> here. But we do have ESC. Going to be sending, it looks like, two men over to C, three outside to B here. Not going for any sort of A contest. Wow. And look at what uh, exactly is doing. They're sending pretty much all five out there. This is interesting stuff. They're going flat out towards this B site. They finally sent Seo back towards A because they're thinking, well, Jesus Christ, we're getting absolutely mowed down here. The likes of Doobie doing real damage, picking up two on the cross, Blade down and Zordon. They've got one back player of Minsec kind of playing the anchor role, getting the respawns on him. So they might be able to look back towards that B site. But they're expecting it. ESC are challenging out. Jansen looking for the kill here. Dancing around, but he does not get it. Silver and Co. will be able to break through. And B is looking vulnerable. But we are seeing a possibility of an A retake if ESC lose out on this. I believe that is Doobie right there trying to hold on. He picks up two kills before he does go down. Actually could have got a respawn on. That might have been perfect for him. But like you said, A being contested. It looks like it will go over in the hands of ESC here in just a second. And they have been able to build up just a slight lead. And Doobie, four and two right now. Fantastic start out of him over exactly the side. Only three kills total. Yeah. He has B more kills yeah. than the entire enemy team right now. Yeah, uh, and it was just locking down B. The the push going from Exacto from the north was really kind of strange. Not not sure if that was uh, the ideal uh, start for these guys. But it will be interesting to see if that one really pulls into effect later on. Because uh, currently, Exacto only have that B site. They are depending on the spawn coming from Seo and Mimsek over towards the north of A. So they can at least try and push this one through. Because Janssen's the only man defending that. So they should be able to do quite well. They are getting the cap underway. But the respawn's immediately coming in. Kazam coming to do damage. And we know he can. And he's just done it. But there is still Mimsek once again playing that defensive role outside on the back. Um, just waiting for those respawns if they need it. Because they are about to get tri-capped. And they need to do something. Going in and drips and drabs is costly costing them this. And that's something you can't really afford to do. We saw so many mistakes with that yesterday of people just going in one by one um, and, and kind of not waiting for the entire squad to get that respawn. And we even have a tri cap coming in for just a little bit here for ESC. And this is definitely not the start you want to have if you're exactly on. They're trying to cap over B this in the meantime in the hands of Zordon. He does get taken down though. And ESC are just completely walking over them. And XPLO, oh, when it's C, he does get taken down. So we're going to see C get taken over here in just a second. But they already have met in the vicinity to permit this uh, to get capped back over. Yeah, Kazam and Lags are both looking to challenge out by the backside of B. It's going to be Silver now. The last man standing for Exacto needs to get these kills in the bag, does not get them. And that means, at least for now, ESC should be able to claim that B site and keep it in hand. Keep them away, keep that two to one, and now look to re pick up that C site as only two players are there. We do see one respawn of Zordon coming back in, so he should be able to help out the uh, player, this Mimsek, actually. And they are looking like they want that C site. They're just taking their time. They're making sure they don't lose out on A. We've got the likes of Doobie there playing the defensive role, picking up kills as they kind of slowly pour in. But right now, that C push is beginning. We are seeing the you know, revives coming in. We've got a little bit of split from Kazam, and they want to make this start hurting now. If they can keep picking up these kills and just, you know, pincering in exactly to the site, they're in a good position. But we do see Sayer at least trying to eye up 
challenging through mid. He's just kind of dancing back and forth. He doesn't know quite where he wants to go. If he goes towards A, he could be in trouble, actually. There's a lot of players present here, and this one literally steps away. Lags are laying in wait. We'll be able to pick up the kill, and that just spells more trouble here. Triple cap coming in for ESC. They are making this hurt. And considering they had an eight-point ticket lead, I'm not sure what's happening in this game. Maybe it's because... They kind of just woke up. Maybe they warmed up right now, but they're doing a fantastic job, able to get a huge point lead right now, actually doubling uh, out the points of their opposition. And exactly what they have, all five men, they far finally able to cap over A currently. They're going to be capping over C here, so they're going to get the advantage. But you see, what are they going to do to kind of stop this? So I want to tag along the Doobie here. I want to see where he's going to go as he's currently 7-4, leading his team and well, tied with his team in kills with, uh, with Laxer right there. But He's working out middle, and this is where we saw a lot of success from coming from teams. If you can control this middle alleyway between these two buildings, you're looking very good because then you force the other team to go in down through these uh, this tunnelway where they're so easy to pick off. Yeah, and it's such a quick push towards the A side if he wants to. He's finally been taken down by Mimsek, but you know, once you dominate mid, you can literally hop, skip, and jump over towards A, and it's yours. And already we are seeing ESC picking up the A site. I'm surprised they haven't gone back for a push onto C, but maybe waiting on the likes of Blade and Co to make a bit of a push towards B. Hopefully Mop those up. Zord on there actually joining in. He's trying to support from the back, but he's missed the money shot. And that does mean his teammates got absolutely decimated. 53 tickets left now for uh, Exacto. It's not looking good. They are not pushing as a unit. They're split up. They're going in one by one. We've got two players actually finally trying to challenge this A site. They look like they're trying to cut their losses and oh, pick up the wow. side they can. Look at that position they were using. They completely mowed them down, picked up two quick kills. We still have one man over on AC pushing in. Just pick up a third. I'm not sure who that was exactly, but those nice three kills coming in. Maybe we can get a fourth here as he's still running around these two generators, wherever they are. He actually does get taken on eventually, but the stall he just pulled off it allowed the rest of ESC to pick up C here. But in the meantime, they are losing out on B as well. Yeah, but they've got some good positions from Janssen and Explode, but we do see the likes of Kazam splitting off from C straight away, looking to pick up the challenge, and already they know that Exacto are too far away to really support their players, hence the aggressive push from Seo that has pretty much worked out for them really nicely there. Now, just Kazam is sitting on the B side. He doesn't have many options here. Might go for a respawn if he can get safe, because there's at least two players down for the opposition. He does get that respawn on him. That's Janssen now wanting to challenge out, because they've been able to hold C. They're fine there for now, but they are not breaking through that B side. And Seo, what was it? Seo and Zordon, pretty much two men holding that B site, able to hold onto that one for quite a while. Now they force ESC on a really weird respawn as they do have a couple men over towards A. You do have Silver there. I want to see, actually tag along with him. I want to see if he can defend against us. He's going to see a start to be capped over. And if he can hold on to this, if he can pretty much single handedly pick up these two kills that he's going to need, as he does get that first one, this might be able to turn around things for ES, uh, for Exacrio. And, Start pushing in, and it looks like he does get some help from his team, so they get their respawn in as well. They do lock down the control on A, but they have lost out on C. And ESC are looking to finally get those respawns in, finally look for a push here. Yeah, Zordon and Mimsek were trying to watch mid. We do see Kazam splitting around the back. He's a big player in this. He's allowed the rest of his team to get over towards that B side. He's going to pick up the double. That's Blade down as well. Beautiful play from him. The likes of Janssen and Explo can now pick up B. The cap is underway. Seo is pretty much the only one there. The exchange goes through, but Janssen still present on B is going to be the key factor in this. They could be getting a trip cap here. They've got two players on A. They've got two now on B. Janssen got the respawn before going down. Explo is now a key factor in this because they can lock this one through. B is going back and forth, but they should be able to keep it in mind if they want to. But they could get a 2-1 against them now. Those respawns coming in for Exacto over by A are big, but I don't think it's going to be enough to really lock this one down now. Yeah, I mean, they're down to 22 tickets, and 8 is going to be that magic number, but honestly, you could pretty much ignore that right now. It pretty much comes out, whoever's going to win this half is going to end up taking out this uh, first map in the special 3. And so you see, they're going for a two-man hit squad onto A. They're looking to cap this one back here. They, they seem to be so strong and so in control throughout the majority of this half, but they just seem to have lost that, and they don't really know where to go to really uh, lock it one or lock, take it back right now. But they're going to get the cap on A, unless Silver has anything to say about it. Silver and Blade actually getting the respawns. There's a lot of resources to commit over towards A. Three men for Zacchio trying to hold on to this push, but in the meantime, they're going to be losing it on B, and that might have been overcommitment. Yeah, most certainly. Doobie there managed to mop up two players by himself on B. They've got one player set up on C, so they might be waiting on the respawns to come in for him to try and defend this one away from the ever-flooding in Exacto. Two men go down, now just Zord on alive. This is pretty much their last chance, wow. and that just got absolutely destroyed by ESC there. They've got the ideal setup. They're in a good position, and no spawn can really help out right now. And with one ticker remaining... That's going to be it for uh, for exactly where they're going to actually lose out on this first map. And that will be a C take it to map number two on Dawnbreaker here. One map away from advancing on and only one win away from, well, if they do pick this one up, only one win away from actually uh, yep. securing their spot in the offline finals. Yeah, and I've got to say, ESC on the second half then, 
looked like a completely different side to the first. They I really handled it. I, I, if, I wish I could tell you, but they seemed to yeah. really handle business then. Um, clearly stepping it up from the first half. Um, maybe working it out, getting the ideal setup. As we said, they, they were playing against a side that had a really unique style of holding A and C rather than the B setup. And we saw that time ESC be able to get, you know, the BC hold, locking it down, winning the one-on-ones, you know, Doobie and uh, I think it was Kazam. Both players were playing beautifully. Doobie on 16 to eight, Kazam 12 to six. So both players winning their one-on-ones and just opened up B every time. There's very little you can do. If you're not winning those one-on-ones, you've got to be playing the flag game. And well, they, they you know, Exacto just weren't. They weren't finding a way in here. What I still understand is, though, ESC had a man advantage in that first half for a, a good minute or two, mm. and they still couldn't pull off a try cap. But then, for some reason, on the other side, they were like, all right, well, it's now 5-5. Five and five. For some reason, we're playing better. We can pull this one off. Maybe they play better when there's more opponents. I don't really know what's going on, but... Give yeah. him credit. Maybe they just woke up. Maybe that was the thing, and, and they yeah. pretty much won that second half with style. Yeah, don't get me wrong. You can go on the you know, deathmatch public and try and warm up as much as you want, but you know it's very different to being in an official game where every single choice really does matter. It's true. So you know you can't read too much into how they're doing just before. It's all about in you know in the moment, and hopefully these guys uh, will be looking to get underway nice and quickly. We can kind of look at Dawnbreak here, and I'm very interested to see um, what Exacto come out with because they're not playing the standard setup that I'm used to. They're kind of going for something a little bit different, or they did at least on Zavod. That didn't pay out for them in the end um, mm -hmm. on the second half, but maybe they've got a little bit of a nice setup for maybe a CB hold that we could be seeing, maybe focusing on the maybe catwalk. Maybe they're weird and like A and C. Just to mess with people's Just minds. Just to mess with you, yeah. <laughs> I'll be interested to see, because there's, there's a lot of variation coming out at the moment because of the different positions people are learning to pick up and all the different gun choices being made as well. Mm. So it's kind of opening up some different uh, variations. So, you know, using the catwalk, using the uh, the inner catwalk almost, you know, that connects the two buildings, C and A. Mm. Um, you can obviously counter the play on the catwalk outside there. Uh, and it'd be interesting to see what they actually go with because I haven't seen too much of these two teams running up to this point because you had the opportunity, I think, so that better games were in cup. Yeah, cup number three. three so I didn't really see them that much until obviously I watched that back. So I'd be interested to see how these two play this one out. Yeah, and just give a little bit of back history on these two teams. So exactly, they did choose this map on Dawnbreaker. They're three for five on it. And then we're for ESC, they're two for three. So pretty similar in terms of percentages across the board for both these teams. However, yep. the third map, if we do get it, the decider map on Lang Kang Dam, neither team has played it yet. That's going to be Ooh. really interesting if we do hit that point because you don't have a lot of experience. Mm. I'm sure they're shooting against each other on this map, you know, obviously Probably. prior on, but yeah. to not play it in a, an actual tournament setting against each other is going to be very dangerous. Yeah, and I, I'm very interested why it's back in rotation so much. Normally it's quite easily banned out. I think this is uh, pretty much, rather than it being choices like we normally see, it's ban, ban, and then you're left with the others. Mm. So rather than you getting to pick your absolute ideal. So that might be kind of why we're seeing some interesting things coming through here. But I think we are almost ready to get in game. Yeah, exactly his final member man. just joined back up. So we can jump in game here. We can kind of take you through what we might be expecting to see. Beautiful skylines, many free cam. Um, I'm so good at this now. I mean, look at this fire. You didn't slow mo it though. I want you to slow mo. You, past. you missed some of the sweet action I did. I, I, I did like the the slow mo like this and yeah. the turning. I was like, damn. I could be a cameraman. That's great, Jason. Actually, a little bit, but in all honesty, <laughs> yeah. Let's know your thoughts in chat actually on how you think the camera works going. We're trying to experiment with it, trying to find the best way to work with what we are given. I believe I can't officially say that there actually will be an update to the spectator client before the finals, if I'm not mistaken. So that would be really nice to have happen. Yep. But it's, it's really tough to get all this action in because if we look at it, if we think about it, this is probably the best way to look at it, but not the most fun. You know, this overview, yes. just trying to see. You can see this is the actual way you can see what the team is doing, see the strategy about it, but then you miss the whole first-person shooter aspect of it. The free cam, it's working out a little bit differently. It's I, I, I kind of like it here or there, minus the having to constantly move the camera with my mouse and, and <laughs> keys, but it's interesting. I, I'm a big fan of seeing the free cam stuff, to be fair. Um, because I feel we get a little bit of a better overview. But yeah, obviously, you guys in chat, let us know what you'd rather see us using more first person, which is awkward. Tic tac. Tic tac. Or <laughs> don't miss the start again. Calm down. Um, but no, do let us know what you kind of want to see, um, especially in the sort of camera setup. What are your important factors here? Do you want to see first person? Do you want to see free cam? Do you want to see a map? Uh, it's up to you guys. Do let us know. We will be taking note. Do not worry. I ran into a glass wall. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to shoot out this glass so I can get through it. There you go. Yes. But, uh, no, this is hard to do sometimes. I've seen you like play around with it, and I, I, I swear I hear like, some plane sounds like... I, I do that in every game that I get free cam in. Like, enemy territory, I used to do it all the time. Like, they're just going through the maps. Like, <laughs> wee. 
My life was very boring as a child. Um, well, I mean, when you're not good at video games, it's kind of rough. I was good at video games a long time ago. <laughs> was? Back in my day. No, no, it was. It's not anymore. That's, that's kind of depleted quite swiftly. But if you are just tuning in, we are watching ESC up against Exactly. We are in group B now. Sniper uh, rifle. Bad sniper rifle. <laughs> <laughs> not hitting them I just realized there's no game sounds. No, oh, there's game sounds. There you go. At least they got to hear the meow, which made it all worthwhile. I'm actually curious, what are they saying in chat right now? With the camera work. Free camel riot. Free camel riot? Uh, free cam is a little much. <laughs> <sighs> what do you want from us people? God. They want perfection. And well, they're in the to... wrong stream. <laughs> uh, have they realized who's casting this? Because that's probably the farthest you're going to get from it. Whoa. I'd rather have first person a map. Free cam if you want to get a good view of where the battle will happen. See, so the thing about free cam is it's less personalized as well as the overview map. Like, you don't really know who's fighting who until you see you come up on the kill feed or you hover over them. That's mm -hmm. one thing that's difficult about it. Because you have to make it personal. You have to, you know, see yeah. how teams are going to do this. And I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I, I learned from yesterday for you. For you. I'm already there. I'm already are ready. Are you watching for the boost? I'm I already like waiting it. for it. So it'll be ESC starting on the Chinese side. So they get the more southern spawn in this, and they will be doing that boost, which I love to see. We did actually see a really cool thing before. You get the boost up, and then you get the respawns on the player at the top of it. So that would be Lagza who will be getting the respawns. So they should be having a little bit of a quicker start here. I wonder if they're going to do it. And they are indeed. So I love seeing that start they come from these guys. Gives them a little bit of an advantage to challenge out on B. And in the north, it will be the US side of Exacto. Currently down the map, but they are in a good position to pick up maybe challenges B side already put in players on the catwalk <laughs> but at the moment those nades are raining in oh he just got the bad side of that he was like the only person that died he was sitting on three nades but he saved his teammates maybe that's the way to look at it but right now we do have the two cap coming for ESC nice little shot out of Zordon right there it does potentially open up B but this is what it's all about this is what we've talked to Dogbert about many 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 times whenever we come to this map it's controlling this area of the map if you can do that, you pretty much control B, and you're seeing that happen right now. Exactly, is able to get the high ground, able to get the shots they need, able to lock down B, and we're seeing uh, actually Doobie go around the back, so he picks up a kill, he does let his presence be known right here, and you're seeing him get shot from that, uh, that balcony side, and he instantly gets taken down. Yeah, Zordon came back around as well, so they're all hunting him down pretty much. And Exactly have a good setup here, but they haven't pushed down towards A, allowing the respawns from ESC that do come down towards that north side of the map to pick up that C site. So maybe kind of being a little bit lax in judgment because you can pick up C and negate the fire coming down from that catwalk. And we are seeing Lagza trying to do it. He doesn't stay alive here. And now Kazam has to kind of consider where the best options are to go. Can they take B in a 3v2 in this one at least at the moment? I don't think so, but they're going for it. Doobie pushing in as is Jansen, so looking at a challenge on all fronts here. And they're getting a lot of respawns on towards, onto this Balkan side as well. They realize the the strength of it, how well it can really work out for your team. And right now, CZ even being capped over for ESC, and they're looking for this track up here. They're gonna be able to pull it off here. Not sure for how long, but this is not the start you want to see if you're exactly. They're committing a lot of time or a lot of time and resources over towards this Balkan side, which they eventually cause them to lose this tri cap and they need to do something about this they need to switch up their strategy asap or they're going to be in a very bad position and i've got to say i really do like the way that um esc were kind of negating the presence of the catwalk a little bit playing inside the building splitting only maybe one or two members towards the b site and just leaving them behind the boxes hopefully avoiding the nades but we are seeing a backspawn from his aqua really going to cause trouble here because we do have zordon right by the a site supported by seo who could be looking to convert b first of all but already esc drawing back towards a looking like they want to make sure they stay within their hands and we are seeing ESC though and uh, once again picking up C so these guys are really doing damage here they are ignoring that catwalk but they may be gonna be losing out on that A site here we do see Zordon and Seo really doing the damage now oh, Zacho, this two-man squad they held on to be three or four kills but they're able to lock that one down or, or will yeah they will Zordon we would pick that one up we'll be able to get the revives as well and look at the response for ESC they're coming in towards this bus towards the southeast side of the map and we see Jansen pretty much single-handedly working towards C right now and maybe he has he has pretty much backup right there on that balcony, but it just doesn't matter in the end. And with that statue that he's using, he's gonna be able to get the cap over to C here. And it forces someone on exactly to kind of deal with them. Blade, he's not in the greatest of positions, even XPLO. Oh, he's using the sniper right. Oh, he's not damn. <laughs> I got all excited because he was using something like that a little bit earlier on. Yeah, no, just but uh, Explo uh, to, to go back to his position, though, it may not have been a sniper rifle, but the position was really awesome. He's been able to push Blade away and just constantly pester him away from the ideal positions to challenge out. And it's just taking the attention away from B. We are seeing the likes of uh, Jansen now eyeing up the site. He is pretty much going to cause so much trouble here. They've already got C. They're looking to take B. They're losing out on A. But the way they've been playing it has been so perfect. They're not allowing, you know, the dominance of that catwalk from Exacto to 
to really fault them here. Even though the game's very close, I think ESC's game plan is working out a little bit better. But look at Zordon's position. He could be really causing trouble. He can pick up B, leave his team to you know, dominate that B side as they're in the better position to if they don't get taken down by Kazam and Explo. I feel like I called it. They're, they're really comfortable with the A and C hold on this map as we're seeing right so far. Next gen. Yeah, but he's just doing that little bit of distraction plan. It's working out well because it's, it's uh, pretty much pulling XPLO back to really defend against it. And it forces ESC to get really anxious and... and rushes them to make a move because they realize, oh, we're two capped right now. We need to make a push on an A. We need to make a push on a C. We need to make it happen somewhere. Well, they're dealing with it quite well here. They're not getting uh, too out of hand, and they're actually getting the kills that they need to pick up, and it looks like they might go for that push on an A. Yeah, and Jansen's breakthrough play there, picking up two on the way back from B, now going to obviously take A, and they've left two players uh, to try and you know, control the B side, but Kazam and an Explo may not be able to do it alone here. Zordon and Co. are picking this one up. We are seeing Mimsek splitting through the buildings, trying to make sure that no one really splits out of this one, but Explo just powering through the site. Finally gets picked up by, I believe, Blade, but still, ESC not really really locking down that B-side too well. They had two players, but almost too distracted to do anything here. And they are just now locked down towards A and just going to have to wait on those respawns. This is really similar to what we saw in the first uh, the first half on Zava between these two teams. It was very close between them. Obviously, the second half wasn't as kind to Exacrio, but you see, considering they had that tri-cap, it's just not really gone their way since then. They just seem to have lost all footing in the game uh, by committing to that for so much. And the back capping that we're seeing exactly what do is really working out well for them. Yeah, it certainly is. And players just constantly on the rotate. Uh, Probo, I believe, is a new addition to this one, unless I'm going mad. Um, I don't remember him in the last game. Nope, he was actually, uh, I think he came in for this map. I yeah, think someone's having problems on his accuracy. Yeah, side. I believe his internet does have problems, but he's a very, and you can tell from his scoreline already, he's, he's doing at 10 to five, so he's doing well for himself. And it's certainly hedging the, the the bets here for anyone who's you know watching this one. Blade in a good position though, could be challenging out the likes of Kazam. We saw Mayek playing this position, um, just constantly pestering anyone, constantly looking to challenge that B site and try and take it away from the opposition. But Exacto are breaking through Blade, doing the damage, and they are holding this two to one for now. But Explo in a great position doesn't manage to avoid the bullets coming towards him. The likes of Probed uh, will be able to pick that one up, and we are seeing you know a bit of a back and forth here. I'm really, I'm really surprised though on how. ESC seemed to have lost control of this game just so quickly. It was just like a, a, a flip the switch, a snap of the fingers. I was trying to think of this one first. Um, <laughs> That's and, hard. Yeah, and they've just been able to completely control this game so far now. And look at the position they're holding. They're just kind of making sure they're not going for a tri-cap, but they're just making sure to kill ESC whenever they push in for a flag and just lock these two down. They, they're more comfortable with holding two than going for that tri-cap. Yeah, and I feel the big difference now is the fact that Blade isn't just playing the catwalk area. He's actually now trying to roam the street a little bit and he's constantly causing trouble. He exchanged then, which is completely fine. It may not be perfectly ideal, but at the moment they might lose out on C, so they need to start eyeing up A, but a big respawn coming in for the likes of Doobie and Kazam that could hold a little bit of an issue for Exacto here because they won't be able to quickly get back up to A and actually make the most of this. But C is not an easy cap. The likes of Zordon have something to say about this, laying down the fire, but now two players present for ESC. They should be able to cap that one over, and we are seeing a two-to-one, and ESC will maintain on A. So, you know, Exacto maybe overdid it a little bit, didn't think about what was happening there in the bigger picture, and they could be triple capped here. And we saw ESC, not easy. sorry, Exacto did this before as they actually do lose a man again. They are down to four currently for this uh, remainder of the half so far, it seems. And they were overcommitting quite a bit at the beginning, and I think we saw this on the balcony side, you know, to the north side, where they had three or four people constantly spawning in there whenever they would die. They wouldn't go for a spawn in the back of, of the enemy team. They wouldn't go for a spawn anywhere around the map that was random. And they were really trying to hammer home the balcony, but I think they realized, like, guys, we don't really need to hold on to this. We need to get two flags. And going around, going about A and, and capping C and back capping and, you know, locking two down was the, the real strategy, the real key strategy for them to pull it off. But being a man down now, that makes it that much tougher. And Laxer, he's all alone in A. He's looking for... Potentially a two kills here. He does see Mimi right there looking for the kill. He actually just prones down, trying to stay alive right now. He gets, he gets him down to very low health, and this two cap that's working, or that they have, is starting to give them a ticket lead here soon. Yeah, and this is so unfortunate for Exacto because they had such a lead not too long ago now. They, they'd worked it out, and now, obviously, with a player down, they're being tri capped here, and we are seeing the likes of Doobie just buying them time, just dancing back and forth on the bus there, just making sure he's you know, pretty much costing the likes of Seo and Probo time to get across the street, and they've not been able to get towards B to make a counter to this. So Lags are now in position with Jensen. They can mop up the kills, but finally A looking like a possibility for um, Exacto, but I feel as though it's almost too little too late for these guys. Those tickets are looking dangerous now. They're getting very close, and that lead that they were once you know, building up on has now been stripped away to absolute minimum. 
Yeah, I was really curious to see that Execo did go for the response yet again in the balcony, which didn't work out from prior in the game. And we're actually getting fought over at A for a little bit here. We do have ESC not committing too much, just sending one or two men there uh, to try to take it or just try to stall him for a little bit longer. It looks like they will be able to finally pull in the ticket lead here, but for how long, or maybe for Execo, how are they going to get their fifth man back before the second half? Obviously, they're going to have that little bit of a time uh, to get someone, but they've already placed one man on their team. Will they have to do a second? They may have to, but individually, they are outplaying ESC at the moment. You know, 16 to 8, 14 to 4, they are playing so well. But at the moment, this is slipping through their hands because they do not have enough players to, you know, draw the splits to really push anything from this. They do finally have a C spawn, but look at those tickets. They are getting low. This would have been a trip cap if Sayo did not touch that C site. But already, Kazam looking like he wants to really cause trouble here. Just pushing out, getting in their faces, not allowing an easy route through, and certainly buying time. 18 tickets is a real worry here, and they don't have C, they don't have B, and they don't have A. They're being trip capped, and there's very little they can do, but individually, they were beating ESC, but with four players, what can you do here? C is going back and forth. Finally, Zordon will be capping this one through, but with only 10 tickets remaining, they have to do something incredible here. They can win the one-on-ones, but there's always that one man extra who can cause that trouble to get that cap. We are seeing an aggressive respawn from ESC. They are getting in their faces. They want this side iron done with, with as many tickets in their pocket as possible. Kazam trying to pick it up B, but not going his way. Three tickets now remaining. This looks like it's gonna be a dominant lead coming out for the ESC side. Yeah, I think you called it perfectly. They can win the one-on-ones, but they have to be winning one-on-twos when they're down in this kind of situation, yep. being a man down. I mean, yeah, when they have five, they can match up against ESC. We saw them have a very huge lead in the beginning of the game um, that they held on to for such a long time, but it's almost impossible to do that when you're that man down. So we're going to have that 30-ticket lead coming into the second half in favor of ESC here, and they are yep. close to locking in their position to the offline funnels. Yeah, they certainly are. They're, they're looking good for it, but... I do feel, I feel really bad for Exacto in that because the way they were playing after ESD getting such a dominant start, they just picked it the hell up. Zordon, 15 to 6, 30 to 11. Everyone, bar Mim second, this was positive. They were, they were sitting so good. And the only reason that even got close towards the end of it is because they lost that fifth player. And ESC, uh, you know, must be thanking God that they, you know, the opponent dropped a player there because they were getting scored on this map. Uh, you know, at the start, they had that good setup. They had that stronghold there. They had the ideal sites. But Exacuo, they broke through it every time. It was, you know, I'm trying to think it was, I think it was Blade, um, who's actually dropped, was such a key factor in swinging that. Because on the street, they had, they, you know, initially, they weren't getting the damage done from that catwalk. That was the big problem. They weren't being able to really lock down B from it. But then putting Blade as the roaming free player, who can just kind of push up when he needs to, do the damage, and then respawn, obviously, on the safer catwalk players, just really gave them the edge there. There was, there was no way that ESC could get set up comfortably to lock down A, B. As soon as he came in, he'd cause trouble. We saw Mayek doing that before when he was actually playing within these mm. cups. And he did it, you know, like there was no tomorrow. That guy can pick up kills like nothing. But, you know, even just the positional advantage from that, you know, give them the edge. But then you move that player away and you're back down to the same issue that kind of riddled it at the very start there. I think one thing we also did see without or within that first half was that exactly they're slow to adapt. But when they adapt, well, let's just say this. They're slow to adapt, but they're not as slow as ESC to adapt. Because obviously they changed up their style, they held the balcony down for such a long time. But then it got to the point where they switched things up. They you know, went in for the response instead of going for the balcony, but ESC didn't really have a response to that. And the only reason that ESC really got back in that, I want to say, is because of that fifth man going down. But either way, oh. we're going to have the side swap. Yeah, Blade is back in this one, so we will be seeing this once again. And 30 tickets, not huge. You know, we look at some of yesterday's games, there were 79 <laughs> tickets odd. Uh, I don't think we're live, funny enough. I think with the planes, uh, that, that means They no. are pretty awesome, though. Like, you know, they're no dog, but is probably the best pilot in this game. Um, I don't know if I agree with that. Then you don't know dog, but it's a talented man, that I SUAB. I thought Northerners <laughs> weren't really good at anything. <laughs> See, this is like the same sounds I make. Wow, someone got a little bit aggressive. Um, but still, yeah, um, we. I think the big thing here is that if Exacuo can get the ideal start and they can put Blade back in that position that he was doing really well in before, nice play. they could do beautifully in this. And they could certainly turn it around regardless of the end ticket scoreline. 30 tickets is not huge. Um, but ESC... I, I don't know. I, I wasn't that impressed with them on this. Certainly did really well at the start, but then Exacto adapted, which they weren't able to do, and kind of ESC won that by having five against four. I think they they won't be too upset with me saying that. Hopefully, you guys at home don't, 
you know, take that as me being against DSC, but, you know, they, they certainly were struggling as soon as they adapted. I think if it was Fnatic, you wouldn't have said anything. <laughs> just I like to harsh on you about being a Fnatic what? like fan so much. I don't know. I mean, you obviously, you played with those players so many times uh, back in the past in what, enemy territory, and you've known them for such a long time, but... Right I've got to give him some love, man. Yeah, Go I mean, right now, I just kind of... I don't know what ESC needs to do, and the thing was, in the first half on, uh, on Zava, they won with eight tickets. But then on the second half, they just completely stomped them. They might just be slow starters, uh, to be fair. Yeah, they may I need don't... to, you know, just try and work out the opponent a little bit and then kind of try and adapt on the second half rather than the first. But, you know, they, they have the 30 ticket advantage now. So we'll have to see how that really comes into effect here. They aren't live just yet, guys. Do not worry. Once they get that next restart in, we will be going underway. But guys at home, obviously, do let me know your thoughts towards this. Who is going to walk away here? Do you agree with me? Do you think that Exactly can do this? Because I think they can. If they get the good start here, and they get Blade doing the same thing, they didn't get their confidence not too much by you know coming into this with the deficit, they'll be in a good spot. But you know, there's still the fact that ESC, they can do damage now. They you know they've got the advantage, not a huge advantage, but they have one. Um, you know, where do your opinions lie on this one, guys? At home, Twitch chat. Let me know. We are just going to get the respawn so they actually swap sides because they were starting on the same part. But let me know your thoughts. Who's going to pick up this map? Because at the moment, ESC obviously have the advantage from Zabod. So they have that little bit of a confidence. They have you know one map in their pocket. They know if they have to lose it, they, they can lose this one and look at the final uh, map out of the three. But we'll, we'll have to see how this one goes. Where's your money on this one as well? I want to say ESC is going to win this one. I know, just like you said, something you mentioned, maybe ESC are just slow starters. And they were really slow to adapt, slower than uh, exactly I was to on this map. But as we saw in the first half, I mean, sorry, the first half, the first map, from first half to second half, they look like a completely different team. I'm not sure exactly what that was. And that was even with the first half of them having a five to four man advantage. And the same thing happened, unfortunately, for exactly what in this half. So I don't know. I, I want to give it to them here. But either way, I mean, these teams are very even. And, and so is ESC and Pyrogen, which, you know, by math, you would also say Exacquio is uh, even with Pyrogen as well. I really don't know which one of these three teams is really going to pull through, but both of them playing pretty damn well. <laughs> and Exacquio going for the exact same start as we saw previously with the boost. Um, all coming out from ESC, so they'll get the same kind of start. The nice little advantage of the respawns coming in after that. But we are seeing an immediate challenge, actually. This is big. Explo has now literally picked up, I think it was Zordon on the cross. So that slowed down the momentum for Exacto off the bat, and now they're in trouble. And we see B actually going to be going into favor of uh, Exacto here, but I like what Lakshu's doing. He's coming from the backside here. He, he kind of expected them to go for that boost. He's going to pick up a couple of kills, and that does open up B to be taken back uh, for ESC, and this is... A little bit of a different ESC that we saw just prior uh, uh, on this last half here, and they've already have uh, picked up quite a few kills as well. They're currently four to three right now. Obviously, not that big of a difference, but a little bit of an exchange at the beginning can definitely set the flow of how the game's going to develop. Yeah, and Exacto have actually broken through completely there. A nice, clean, you know, squad wipe towards B. They haven't kept it over yet because obviously the fire coming in from Explo is fairly substantial. But you know, maybe ESC were waiting for maybe a closer spawn than that. They're now locked down towards C, and we're going to see Exacto finally in the more advantageous position. And I'm curious to see how they play this A B hold now. Normally they didn't have A, they had B and C and they worked that really nicely. But this time we're seeing a big split from ESC coming up that roadside. They've been mowed down in between Blade and Probo who are just picking up the kill after a kill and just keeping them locked there. More time they get on this 2 to one hold, the better for them. And I think they're cutting their losses ESC and just going to try and head up A. But immediately the push around the back coming from Exacto, lovely play there, really doing the damage. And another squad wipe <laughs> for Exacto yep. right there. So that definitely opens up things. And they have those 11 kills to the five. <clears throat> Currently have ESC and they do have a nice little bit of a lead coming into this one. Remember, if Exacto falls below 30 tickets, then that means they will have lost this map. They will have gone 0-2 uh, in this best of three and will actually be moving into the loser half, uh, loser bracket part of the final. And right now you're seeing Kazami trying to work up towards this area. He does actually have a little bit of an RPG with him. <laughs> Fortunately for him, he's 0-6 and six currently. Yeah, not, not the ideal start, but we are seeing ESC taking their time. We've got Explo taking a long route around. He's been found in the end, and Doobie's now the most forward person. He has picked up Blade there, so that's opened up A for the taking. I can imagine those respawns will be coming in thick and fast now. ESC should be able to claim this, but we do see the immediate response from Exacto picking up C. But can now, it's, it's all about who's going to pick up that B site. Exacto saying, sod it, we're going to get those respawns a little bit further back on B, and we're just going to lock you down to what we did really well at the start, holding you at A and making sure you 
do not get the ideal setup here. I'm curious to see where Blade is, if he's eventually going to push up to more the position he's standing before. He's quite aggressive here. May have to wait on a couple of respawns, get taken down, then try and play. Because you're already seeing Lagza and Doobie sitting in the prime location. The Blade just used to rip him apart in. Kazam's gone down. B is being capped over. Finally, Seo pushing in, picking up Doobie there and looking for more. Now, Exacto can just sit back and do what they were good at. And this is the danger zone. And they do have like a nice 40 ticket lead for themselves as well. So looking to take it into a third map right now. As you see, Probo just kind of sitting inside this building between C and B, just trying to play a little bit of a floater role. And you're seeing two men on it, uh, exactly actually use onto this balcony side to really defend against it. And you're seeing, you see, they don't really have a response for it just yet. Doobie, gonna be working on towards the outside. I wonder if he's gonna go for the balcony and try to clear that one up right now. And it looks like he's in fact gonna be going for that. Yeah, and Exacto, uh, and they're in a little bit of trouble. ESC decided, let's stop just running out towards B because we can't claim it like that. Let's play from the inside, take away those two players, I think it was Blade and Probo, and then just dominate from the inside out and just leave them to what they were doing before. They're going to get the possible tri-cap off the back of this. If Jansen can turn this one over on T, they're in a great spot for a good couple of seconds. For a moment, they had that tri-cap, but now Probo needs to win this one-on-one -on -one against Kazam on A. He's done just that, so at least they'll have a one to two, and now they can convert down towards B if they want to. Blade, now needs to take down Lagza, Doobie, and uh, Zordon there to try and help him out as they do go for the exchange. And B is pretty much up for grabs here, whoever gets there first. And you're seeing Jansen, he's trying to hold on to C for the longest of times. He essentially <laughs> does get taken down. So, exactly, they overcommitted yet again onto the back side, getting those three respawns up there. And we saw ESC take advantage of that completely. And now from the uh, from the back of that, they're actually going to get the two cap on B, they're going to get the cap on a C, and they're going to force ESC to play from the back of A here. And we've already seen how hard it's been for ESC to do that. Certainly challenging. We are seeing Blade back in the position he was so good, good at earlier, using that Scar H as well. So he's happy running with that one. That close range impact really coming into effect. Wondering if he can pick up a second. He's done just that. So Blade is really being such a key factor in my eyes. I, I love this guy's play coming out. And actually, a lot of the ESC side and Exacto are running with those uh, Scar H's. So looking like they, it's, it's coming to the forefront here. And this is really troubling sights for ESC. They're not finding it a comfortable ride at the moment. They're kind of, you know, fighting for scraps. They're picking up the C site every now and then. Kazam's pulling off. But they haven't been able to dominate either of these sites for an extended period at all. And at the moment, it's, it's Blade who's picking up the kills. 12 to 6 right now. And you're seeing that completely reflected in the scores as well. I mean, it's almost a double advantage for uh, Exacto. And they look so hit or miss in that first half until they were able to finally pull together uh, later on. And you're seeing Kazam still trying to run with... That little bit of a class, a little bit of a, a, a cheeky class, I want to say, just because it's a little bit different. You don't really see it too much on this map uh, necessarily, but the engineer, unfortunately, not working out too well for him. And I really wonder where he's going to go. If he's going to keep spawning in, is that we're seeing Zeko? They're going for the two man back on balcony yet again, and they're going to go for the B. I started just the C cap right now, as they're actually losing B to ESC. Yeah, Blade was going for the B cap, which we saw initially, but he got taken down. And now Zordon trying to pick up the mantle. He is literally centimeters apart from the opponent. He's going to go for the aggressive peak there, takes down Doobie, and they should be able to turn over this B side. But have they, you know, controlled C? Have they locked down A? I think we're going to be seeing an A B hold in favor to Exacto, but I'm not sure if they can contain it here. They're not in the ideal setup. We're seeing the back spawn coming for ESC, and that could really cause trouble now for Exacto if they're not set up to expect this. That building got my way of my free cabin. How dare he? But yeah, you do see that back spot coming for ESC, and we're going to see a little bit of a fight break out here. And that alone should have opened up with the kill on the blade that A being taken over for ESC. And they have controlled C as well. In the meantime, B is not really. It has potential to be taken, but you're still seeing exactly get the respawns on the balcony. And they do have one man, though, Blade, coming from the backside, going for that random spawn here. And he's over towards C. He's looking to make a play here. But if he's not too careful, he could be taken down. This could be a nice try cap for ESC. Yeah, let's see how that one goes there. We do see uh, Probo breaking through. He's joined by Mimsek. We've seen the players, you know, being taken out from the balcony. So there's no immediate support. But at that moment, ESC looking to pick up C. They still have A in the bag. Only B being lost. But the immediate response from Exacto getting towards C, they want that BC hold. They're not even challenging flat out for A at the moment. They just want to kind of hedge their bets, keep this, you know, lead that they built up early going pretty much. And Blade doing what he does best, dominating up that street and making it hard work for ESC. But Lagza getting straight on the site could really shake things up there for them. And you're seeing him, just like you said, Blade, I, I want to keep I'm gonna keep an eye on him. He's 60 and 10 currently. He's been able to pick up so many kills with the Scar H that you, uh, you pointed out earlier on. And B has been taken away from them, but he's looking to take this one back. He's looking to make a play on it. You see three men on Zekko, though, already over there. And we're going to see Jansen work out towards his outside. Will he pick up the kill on the Blade? No, he does not. And Blade wow. is just making his, he's stamping his mark on this area. He's like saying, this is mine. There's none other like it. Go away. 
Yeah, and it's, it's the perfect kind of um, composition between being aggressive and being passive. He's nicely playing it, so he's drawing them to him, and he's making sure there's no easy, you know, take onto that B side. We are seeing ESC finally, you know, looking towards B. They've got players in a good spot here to maybe make a challenge, but immediately we're seeing Seo picking up the position. Blade now playing a closer role on B, and it's doing just the same. Anyone in that spot can do well here, and we are seeing a Seo doing exactly the same. He does go down eventually to Janssen, however, so maybe not quite as good as Blade at it, but still, that's caused enough trouble on B to allow Exacro back in it. And we see 29 to 78 is currently the tickets right now. Exactly. If they drop below 30, that will mean they have dropped out. But if they can just stay above that and actually get the uh, the half win, they will be taking it to a map number three on a map where neither of these teams have actually played in the EMS one series currently. And Probo actually get taken out by Laxer over at A. And this is going to give you see the control yet again of that. And they're seeing a lot of hits at A and C go down here. And it seems like they're trying to, well, at least on ESC side, Pull exactly away from those balconies and force them to be more in your face where I guess EC's feeling a little bit more comfortable. Yeah, and it, it's kind of reflected in the guns as well, I feel. I, I'm not a big fan of the Scar H close range. Obviously, some players are great with it, but you know, if, if I had the choice, it's all about the Ace-23 and things like that for me. And, you know, that's what you see are generally running with. So maybe getting a little bit more of a benefit towards those close range areas. But 15 tickets is not a lot. ESC are in trouble. They're already losing out on A. Sayo just split their straight up. Doobie tries to challenge back with a big fight going down on B pretty much. The fire coming in from both sides. We are seeing the exchange on the balcony between Jansen and Probo. But right now, Kazam is the player on the site. But the site will remain in the exact quo's hand. That is a try cap coming in to really add insult to injury here. And I, I said it before, Exacro, they lost out in the first half because they lost that one player. And this time, they've been able to prove that that is very much the case. Well, they're going to take it to a mount number three here. Going to be going to Land King Dam. And Exacro definitely playing a lot better than we saw them do on Zavod. Even though they were a man down the first half, the second half, they didn't really seem to play that well either. And right now, I mean, when, with no real match history of these mm. two teams on this map, I don't know which one, which one's going to pull off. We saw an exciting game uh, on it yesterday with Mitra Makers versus Dinitas. No, is that Mitra Makers? Wow. Fanatic, Fanatic versus Dinitas. Close. Yeah, it's close. <laughs> Almost there. Um, that ended up with Fnatic actually pulling out the win. Yeah, I, I don't know what to expect from this map. From the place so far, I feel that... I, I don't know. ESC were, were good on Zavod, but... I think Exacro could do this, to be fair. I, I, I think, think they've they got a really good chance of this. If they can play it like they did just then on Dawnbreaker, then they're perfect. They'd really do well on this. But it's, it, how they apply that, I do not know. So I'm kind of interested. Are you sitting right now? Yes, you are clearly sitting right now. I'm re ready to have your mind blown. Okay. Pyrogen 2 0 against all authority. What? Yeah. Mine is below. What? <laughs> really? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm being told by a director that. It actually do we do we trust him though? I'm not sure. He got the information from Dogbert, so uh, by we association, all, we love yes. Dogbert. Yeah, yes. Dogbert is the god of Battlefield, and so oh, yeah. he's good in the world. This is why I said Group B to me is like wow. the real. You can't tell who's going to go through. We we kind of bet <laughs> against all three because of the latest results, but getting two out off the bat, they're really being hit or miss today. So Pyrogen were the last team to qualify. They're in 16th, and yeah. against Authority were fourth. Fourth, four. There we go. I did three. I'm counting's hard. Yep, yep. Um, but Th that is that's huge. not counting though. That's just numbers. Oh, I found it hard to count. Place count to four. four. <laughs> you notice in Germany, by the way, this is something. If you got, if you saw in Glorious Bastards, this is three in Germany. What? Yeah, this is three in Germany. These are thumbs. But in like America, we use the fingers. <laughs> wow. Don't you just love our filler talk? It's it's fantastic. It's better it's than special. Spig Spagbol, to be fair. My my talk about Spagbol was not great. I was disappointed because I like you the way people in the room now are like three, 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 three. I saw a lot of people holding up their fingers. <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah. I was disappointed because when we talked about Spagbol, or when you're talking about it yes. uh, over in Poland, you forgot to include me, where you kind of grouped me with all the mm. casters who like it. I hate red sauce. Yeah, I know, but that's strange. It goes no, at home. It's not. How many of you like spaghetti bolognese? Right, it's just awesome. You know. Like all the variations. Have you like ever had fettuccine, fettuccine Alfredo? No. Exactly. That's how, that's why you know nothing about sauces. But who doesn't like spaghetti? Um, a large portion of people in the world. Yeah, tell Italy that. Tomatoes are gross. <laughs> Such America. How's that America? How is that even close to America? That's like that's like your de default insult to anyone <laughs> that's from America. It's uh, oh wow. Because you're American. That's why. Anything remotely healthy? No. <laughs> Do you like any fruit? Um, yes, I actually love fruit. Really? What, what's your favorite? Korean grapes, actually, my favorite. Okay. But right. I How do are love they grapes. specific to others? 
I, I'm, I'm you unaware. You differently. You don't right, eat the skin. Okay. Are they, are they given skinless or do you no. peel it yourself? No. You, well, you don't even peel it. What you do is you actually squeeze it in your mouth. So you just pretty much suck in the juices. <laughs> you eat the fruit around the seed <laughs> and you spell the seed. Wow. Okay. Let's get yeah. in game because Jason's have it. Good stuff. Is this live? That's the real question. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm. Okay. But I also like, I also like pretty much any fruit except mangoes. I'm not a big fan of mangoes. Mangoes. And watermelon. I hate watermelon. Mangoes. This is, now, this is where you tell me the fruits that you like. I, I My favorite fruits are kiwi. Really? Yeah. Big fan of kiwis. Really? Big fan of kiwis. Like, they're good. I that like sounds it. weird. Why? Like, if, out, out of all the weird? fruits you could choose from, you choose, like, the smallest one that's green. Oh, yes. Coming from grape. That is, that is true. <laughs> Sizes are hard. I'll go with that excuse. <laughs> In America, we have one size, and that's extra large. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why I insult you with this Super stuff, size right? it. Wow. <laughs> wow. Even the Americans in the room are laughing at him. This is great. He's being disowned by his own kind. I'm this is not. glorious. I am not being disowned by anyone. Jake we are up, looking, why are we looking at my screen? I don't know. Our room is, we, were on, we were on this the whole time. And no, I'm just we like, should have gone in game. Let me go look at Twitch and let me go look at my emails See, real literally, quick. See, literally, look oh. at my emails. Basically, he's looking at Twitch chat for people who agree with him going, yeah, spaghetti's gross. Yeah, I want to be able to see who's that's talking crap about me. That's literally all he's doing. This but is it. Not to look uh, at your screen because I can't. All the respect lost for Jason Kaplan. Let me go ban that go. guy real quick. Hold on. Me, he's no, your no, biggest no. fan. No, let I did ask him earlier if he was your biggest fan. He he's my drug dealer and clearly he's not. Yeah, sadly. Wait, so how do you eat pizza? Red sauce. I eat pizza. But, mm, wow, man, okay. Because you load so much. Don't, don't shake your head at me. I could do what you I don't, won't. Not you, her. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you load it up with so much cheese and pepperoni that you don't even taste the red sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, what don't you like? Um, Besides me. <laughs> that's a good point. What, like food-wise? Yeah. Mm, like some fish, like it's too strong. You know what I mean? Like it, I, it smells I can agree bad. With that. Like I can agree with that. Sardines. Mm, yeah. No, no one likes Anchovies. I, anchovies. Yeah. No, don't like that. Like, I don't mind like salmon or tuna because they're kind mm. of like. Or some halibut. It's a nice halibut. Halibut? No, I'm not a big what? fan. Like, it gets too strong for me. Like, any mm. strong kind of stuff like that. Mm, What's no. funny is like tuna is like the strongest flavored fish. Like, canned tuna. I don't tuna. think so. I don't know. Like, I load it up with mayonnaise and vinegar and salt. And, yeah, bang up. Mayonnaise. Love it. Yeah. Except German mayonnaise. It's disgusting. What? They have like six love different it. mayonnaises. It's like, let's have some delicatessen mayonnaise. Let's have some salad mayonnaise. Let's have some mayonnaise you put on your cereal. Let's have mayonnaise that you put on desserts. Let's have, I'm running out of things. Help me out. Chips. Yes, mayonnaise you put on fries. It's Chips. just fries. Chips. Don't understand that either. That's something that Jeremy is really weird about. 200 euro for someone to punch that guy in the face. So you're offending people with your spaghetti. See, you, would be, you would be helping me because then I wouldn't need plastic surgery on my nose. You would correct it. Dude, it's only me who gets asked about the whole nose surgery thing. I was like, well, ESL didn't sponsor me You had me nose enough. surgery? Oh, I wish I did. Would it still look like this if I did? Jesus it's, Christ. It's kind of cute. Ah, it's not great. It's not great. Okay, good. We're not on my screen, so I can actually all tab out and look at stuff. Well, you know, we're waiting on the third map, basically. There's no, there's no sound it. anyways, because I have it muted, so the in-game sound we're <laughs> oh, hearing right now. I think oh. we might be getting oh, okay. underway. Really? Well, I'm, I was really enjoying the chat that yeah, I just we, got into. Yeah, we had a great chat. Yeah, what's with pepperoni, by the way, in Germany? So pepperoni in Germany is like actual pepperoncinis, kind of. But in America, it's pepperoni salami. Yeah, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Germany really knows what they're doing with pepperoni or salami, yeah, right? Yeah, or food. I mean, right? come they on. Don't, they they're don't not understand Italy. that stuff. They're not Italy. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. What do you do when you get to Texas? That's right. Getting a giant steak. I'm going to get a big grill. Like, You're going to get a steak. Yeah, no, no, I'm gonna get the whole grill though. You know, they get those awesome like grill houses, whatever they are. Like, I don't even know what they are, but it's just like I just want a plate piled up with various meats. I think everyone on Twitch chat, we should sponsor her a payment for doing or for doing a contest no, no, no. of eating the largest no, steak I, possible. I don't it's need like a more 72 followers ounce. And subscribers on Twitch. Oh, what? what? So we're paying what? for you to eat what? it, no, whether I don't you like fail this, or win. I don't like but this. But in the end, you always no. fail. No. I think we're getting live though. Yeah, I think we are. Should probably get into that. And no, I too no, we're down wish a man from enemy territory. Exactly. No, we're down a man uh, from exactly. So. No, I do. I do want to point out. So I want you to say, I wish Twitch TV was available when ET was a thing. I agree. It would be cool. Why would you want to watch a bad game? Mm. A game that required no skill, and that's why you could play it. Tell that to Reload, <laughs> or Ferris, or Knight. You're lo I'm losing. You lost me on names. Yeah, you you really know your esports, don't you, buddy? Um, I know Damn. Heaton. Heaton knows Ferris. They used to play together. Heaton's awesome. He's yeah. really buff. Yeah, he's he's an attractive male. He definitely so is. The worst thing I is, right? Like, what is the worst thing? 
it, they look so genetically perfect. Like he, he went Sweden. out. Like, yeah, we were out for drinks after one of the you know, the uh, CS:GO shows, and Danny, our makeup lady, who's blonde, tall, ridiculously attractive, yeah, sinister, she's, she's and I'm bad. like, it's like those genetically perfect people just next to each other. It just makes everyone else look atrociously bad. It's Have you really touched upsetting. Heaton's pecs though? Uh, not recently. Would out. you prefer Pasha's pecs or Heaton's pecs? Heaton. Yeah. He, he, well, he has the better general package. What about? What about I, I bet you like his package. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He, it's like a. I'm running out of words now because I'm flustered. <laughs> you know, I love people who have internet problems and can't get into the game, because it makes us talk about these things. It, it makes me sound so much more intelligent. It's glorious. maybe we should just go in a game and then and that way yes. I can look at your screen and get really close to you without it being too awkward. <sighs> What? Okay, See, so even what? like the production guys are throwing yeah. stuff around. They're, they're they've had enough. Chat. They're like, I'm done. I'm out. Maybe we should show you, uh, give you a little tour of the studio. We should take the camera that you guys are using to see us and just kind of show everyone else in the room. No. No. Bad plan. No. Yeah. So, you know, if our producer's listening, we can just go into game and. Yeah. Finn, go yeah. into game. There we go. There we go. See, after there working with ESL Poland, you have to be very direct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You just shout at them and hope. <laughs> let's, break. Take, let's take a look at this go chat. Go to a break. Poor uh, American Jason. Tori, you are American too. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> what is this stream about? <laughs> no one knows what it's about anymore. <clears throat> I just realized they're a minute behind us too. Yeah, they'll, they'll catch what? up. Oh, yeah. There we go. Game sounds. There you go, guys. At home. There you go. You can just enjoy the morning round. We aren't actually missing um, any action. If you guys are wondering, we are just waiting for this to get out of the way. What is this commentary, please? <laughs> Heat and such hot. Yeah, such hot. Very pecs. So hot. Does this guy still cast LOL? Uh, probably not after today. Uh. Uh, this is what happens, basically, when there's downtime. And we can do nothing about it, <coughs> pretty much. Uh, we, are I mean, we could go to a break, I guess, if we really wanted to. Uh, but there's, there's no need for that. We can continue talking here. Because people like to hear our voices, right? Right? Yeah. Jason likes packages confirmed. People are offering packages to check out. Really? I should give them my Snapchat. They can. <laughs> Isn't that what Snapchat's basically for? I I, I thought so. I know, maybe I was wrong. Gravely mistaken. It's yeah. Just some I really mean, I like just PG thirteen stuff. Yeah. Damn. I thought it was like the the chat roulette of phones. It's a bad place to be. <laughs> what did BF four crash and this is what we get? <laughs> welcome, welcome finally to what we do. Uh, yeah, but yeah, we are still waiting on the final flight to come back in. So we can just talk a little bit of nonsense. We can go back to how great Dogba is, though, for a while, no, right? No, you know, You're I'm not, following a great I'm not player, a by the way. Fan. Like, you are showing I, this game Sayo, off. Sayo, I don't know why it didn't stick with him. There we go. So we'll just stick with this guy looking nice. at... Nice, uh, green. Going at stuff. Green. Let's, I, don't like, I don't like building him up, though. Because then he'll get an ego, and then... What, Dogba? Yeah. Why do you want to... Imagine a northerner with an ego. How scary is that? Joe. No, nah, Joe doesn't have an ego. It doesn't happen. Why are you guys on your tablets? What are you doing? Don't tell me you're going to Twitch chat to talk. What? Don't nod your heads at me. That's <sighs> what we have to deal with here. Okay, well, let me know your name and I'll ban you out of chat so you can't say anything. That'd be great. He's got like, I hate that Jason. God, Americans such stupid. <laughs> See, they know it. They're like, yeah, how did you know? Sorry that yeah, you guys didn't win the American Revolution. <laughs> You know, I, th I, think, I think America should implement something. Where if you talk Please crap about on. America, you can't eat any of our food. Okay. That's the best food in the world. <laughs> Ooh, would you like a shovel to dig yourself any deeper? I'm really tall, so let's just bypass shovels. I don't know where I'm going with that. That I'm was just, a I'm just, great statement. I'm just literally can. waiting for... The, oh, they do have five now. But for how long? <laughs> let's see. Oh, so you've got some okay, uh, here we go. Snapchats coming. I got it. I got it. They don't know my. They don't know my name is Snapchat. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh come on! We just got the good stuff, and they restart because they're ready. To be able to make all players appear on Battlefield Four servers. That's a pretty crappy play. superpower. No, right now be the best p power in the world because I think we are ready to get underway into Dam, which is our third and deciding map. Uh, ESC picking up the first, which was Zavod in quite convincing style. Uh, in the end, on the second half, first half only winning by eight tickets. But in the second map, we saw Exaqua really showing what they're made of. So this is the day for underdogs to really shine. And uh, I wish we had a hand cam for you. 
You do a lot of hand gestures when you're casting. Yeah, I know. Like, have you not seen every picture of me is doing weird hand movements? No, I have not. Then look at every single picture <laughs> that's been taken from events. My hands are everywhere. It's terrible. Okay, so like you said, we're getting underway here. Final map. The winner of this will go on to play against Team Pyrogen. The loser will play against Against All Authority. And that is no easy team to play against. I said against way too many times, but on Lan Kang Dam, it's an interesting map. It really is, because there's a lot of things you can see pulled off. There's a lot of different strategies you can go about it here. But the one thing that I think we've seen in common between many of the teams that uh, have actually played on it is controlling the roofs. Yes. Thanks, Lauren, for all that. That's good. That's all good. We are seeing the initial exchange going through, but uh, the main thing that I'm looking at is Sayo. Uh, That's what exactly what I was showing on screen, because he picked up a guy going for the ladder, going on top of the roof, just like a sand. <laughs> Let's get back into the action, please, Jason Kaplan. We are seeing B going in favor to ESC at the moment. They have managed to retain the numbers there on that side, winning out those one-on-ones for once. And now looking quite comfortable here. But we are seeing Sayo once again edging around the side of this map. He's slowly but surely going to get a really nice position to get those respawns in to hit that A site. As so we are seeing the vast amount of ESC, at least for now, towards B. But as soon as I can imagine, Explode does you know, ring the alarm bell. The respawns will be coming in. Mimsek will be making the push. Does get some fire down. Finally picks up the kill. No time for respawns. They're coming in for ESC. So they are logged down to just B. We are seeing them trying to break out of B towards that C site. And Zordon trying to get to that defensive position as soon as possible. Sam, um, he's... Gonna die. He was working up towards C, trying to take that one back, trying to push in this advantage they have at B, trying to get that two cap back for themselves, but he does go down. And that leaves uh, Blade Hero all by himself on top of this roof. Look at that. On the rooftops, trying to defend against it. Does pick up one kill, and that should be able to open up or actually lock down C here with the help of the rest of his teammates. A nice uh, little bit of a play right there from that stairwell, and, and as well as from the roof case, but exactly who would have thought A and C would have been their two flags that they want to hold? They like playing unorthodox, but as you mentioned, you know, Mimsep, he's not playing from the site, he's playing on the roof pretty much to allow secure respawns to come in when it's necessary. Um, he's obviously picked up the kill there, taking down Lagza, but there is still one more player present on the site, so eventually you might see a bit of a kind of hap-handed push towards B to allow the respawns towards Mimsek if they need backup on A. They are still trying to challenge down, they're still holding on towards the B site, so until they lose that, I can imagine he's just going to try and stay alive, challenge every now and then, watch his own push, and try and play safety games. But the B site is now going the other way, Way. So it's time for those respawns to come in, Probo being the first, and it's time to get that A site back in control of his Zakuo. Let's see if they can pull it off here. I mean, they do have, I guess, one or two men there to stop him, but they do have three on that roof. They're really trying to work with that. So you have Seo drop off. He's going to come on the backside on the B. This could be very dangerous because Doobie, he's the only man there to stop this. And if he gets killed from the back or from any different direction, that will open up B to be taken. And right now, is he finally able to take two, uh, two points back, which... They were trying to do for a majority of the game, but the ticket difference isn't that far just yet. Yeah, still a very close game. Sayo still eyeing up that east side. They're not done just yet. Bit of a awkward spawn for Probo. I don't think he mean to spawn out that far, but who knows what they're up to. Mimsek and Sayo now getting in towards that east side, trying to turn this one through. Lagza, however, is denying them easy access as Explo joining in now, being the backup, making sure they don't get pushed from the side, which we do know a player is now edging towards. So nice little play from ESC, holding on to A here, but it's a matter of time for Exaquo finally think, okay, maybe we need to make a really concerted push on this, because at the moment they're going in in drips and drabs, but we are seeing you know a good play from ESC, maybe expecting to lose out on A and already getting out towards that C site. They're, yeah, they're being completely shut down at A as well. I mean, ESC just have the position on them completely. They pick up two quick kills right there in uh, succession. They even have Kazam, a little bit of a foot roll. He's actually capping over on C right now. They don't even see him. He's in the stairwell, but he gets taken down. And that will stop him from being able to manage to take that one back. But we do have... Exactly, we're finally able to cap C. We do have Seo very far out spawned, actually working around the uh, southeast side, southwest side of the map in an open area, trying to get her back cap on A here. And you're seeing right now that Exactly's having a very tough time breaking into B, and they very seldomly hold it. Yeah, and at the moment we're seeing a very aggressive push from Exacro, knowing that B was going to be light on players there for ESC, so they're going to try and make their move in. Zordon, Mimsek, and Probo all edging in forward. The only fire coming back from is Explo at the moment, who's kind of got himself in a good little spot here. Nate's, however, are raining in, so his spot's been found out pretty much. He's been prone down against, and he does go down to Mimsek, the prone master, as Probo now trying to defend B off from the oncoming hordes. He's got one in the bag, and they're actually holding these guys at bay, leaving Blade just to lock down C from the rooftops, holding the push and leaving the rest of the side to dominate B, but the respawns now coming for ESC could cause trouble unless they take down Lagzo, which they did. So now we might see that 2-1 hold finally in favor to Exacto.
And Seo, he could go for the cap on Aira now if he really knew where the rest of the team was because right now there's no one there on that site to, uh, to hold him against it. They're finally getting those respawns on the far outside. And he actually has one man climb up the ladder, does get the kill. They will lock down the control of, uh, for them a little bit longer. And I think he still doesn't realize that there's no one in A right now or maybe he just doesn't want to cap it down, but they do have that two cap. They do have great hold onto the outside. And you're seeing the two men for ESC trying to work inside the building, trying to finally get around somewhere, get the respawns on top of them so they can cap something back here. And Doobie, I don't know, he's committing a lot of time to A. I, Exactly doesn't have any intention of going for or going for that try cap right now, but he's still giving a lot of time currently there. Yeah, but he's at least keeping one other player present, you know, one other player busy, which is perfectly fine um, as long as ESC can actually do something once they start pushing towards that B site, which they are now. They've finally broken through. And Lags are being the most patient player in the world, waiting for his moment to push out towards that C site. I think he's been spotted down. And, you know, Zordon not allowing that. And already Blade Ray on the back. Lovely little rotate coming through, dealing with that threat, but maybe overestimating how much they needed, you know, to put towards it. They've lost out on A, they've lost out on B. And now exactly once again, need to kind of, you know, consolidate everything that's going on here and actually, you know, lock down two sites for an extended time because they haven't been able to do it. Constant pressure coming in from ESC has made it really damn hard. The scoreline just reflecting it. But we'll have to see how this one really comes through at the moment. It's not, you know, too one-sided at the moment. 75 to 88 is very, very close. I feel like Zacho had a two-cap way longer than ESC has had, and yet they only have, like, a minimal lead. I'm not sure exactly how that's that's working out. I mean, they do have 35 kills as well to back that up. But somehow ESC has been doing a fantastic job of, of keeping close in terms of that. And you see them... Know, exactly, at least trying to work in towards B right now. They do have A, they do have C for a little bit longer. Uh, while Doobie is eventually going to move over and be able to pick down. He actually does clear off some, uh, one man from the roof, and that might have finally given them an opportunity to take control of that rooftop. Where you see, really hasn't really shown too much aggressiveness there. They really not show too much presence in trying to go for that. Yeah, but look at Blade. He's in the perfect position to wait for those respawns if they want to hit up C again. You know, and he can just play safety pretty much. Well, you okay? I, you think you just like look at Blade, and I have no idea where he t where he is. That's when you go to the overview map. Couldn't find okay. him still. There's no names you can press there. Press tab. Tab is not a button. My hand is anywhere near right now. <laughs> but I do see Blade finally on top of that rooftop and go on. Yeah. So that's allowed the likes of Provo to get back in here. Allow some more respawns to come in. But perfect play from Doobie, picking up both and denying that C site to go in the hands of the opposition. So this is good play once again from ESC. They you know they're not playing the rooftop game that we're seeing uh, Exacto play, which may not be as you know safe. But they're making it work, and this time Exacto have the numbers to make this one really stick. But Explo sitting in a great spot here, waiting for that drop down. Does pick up, I think that was Zordon just leaping off the roof. And Doobie is yet to even be challenged. So this is good play from me, see. I like their setup on these sites here. I mean, the thing is, they've been not using the rooftops, but they're pulling out the lead here in just a second. I mean, they will have a tie ticket uh, currently, um, and we'll finally pull ahead. But we see Exacto, I mean, I think they've finally given up on the rooftop play a little bit here. I mean, they're keeping maybe one man on one single side just to kind of get those respawns if they need, like you mentioned before. But you're seeing Seo and you're seeing uh, Mim just kind of sitting on the top of A currently. And if they're going to try to stop this cap from happening, they need to get down there and they just don't want to go for it. And they're being two cap, even potentially three in a second. Yeah, we'll see if that one actually sticks at this in the moment. We are seeing the likes of uh, Zordon and Blade both over by C. Blade still on the roof. He's not leaving that for the life of him. Uh, roof camber is the understatement of the century, and it's not working out. They're losing out here. They have the chance to get that C site. They've got A on the go, so maybe this time it will pay off. But already the respawn's going through. Doobie is there with the Anson, and the damage is starting to be caused. The Anson yet to push up, so it looks like it's only a one-man play, but they might be surprised when the next comes funneling through. But we are seeing those nades holding them back here, and a nice little cleanup by the A-side by uh, Kazam and Explo will bring this one back in the hands of ESC. And it looks like they're going to finally be able to build up Elite here, which is interesting considering how this game's been going underway. And this is what I said, you know, about Ezekiel earlier on, that they're really slow to adapt, but ESC seem to be slower. But right now on this map, ESC seem to have woken up. They seem to have figured out the strategy and are working around that um, by not kind of going for that high ground, not trying to contest it anymore, and just trying to go for straight for the caps, where you can't do that on top of these uh, buildings in Jansen right now. Looking for some hold on the B here. He actually does get the cap over. They will be able to get A and B right now. And you look where everyone exactly is currently. They have really interesting positions on this map right here. They don't really have the ability to push into anywhere just yet. And with uh, Lagster here defending against this push on a B, the nice little shot right there on a Zordon, it does lock down and keep this hold in favor of ESC. 
Certainly does. And uh, we're going to see if they can hold on to this. As you mentioned, lags are there by B. Explo as well. The last two standing members by that B site for now until his respawns come in. Uh, now joined by Jansen. Have to really hold you know, the oncoming forces. Probo now breaking and going straight for the aggressive play. Takes down Explo from the office. And now it's a 3v2 in favor to Exacto. If they can get these last two members down quickly, they have a good chance of converting this site over into their favor. And they do get the cap onto that. So they're going to get B. They're going to get C. And they're not worried about A right now. They're just going to go for this two hold here. And at least uh, really curious to, get, to see how close each half has been. Minus... Uh, just one on, on Salvat earlier on for ESC where they ended up pulling up their first map victory of uh, this best of three. And so on here in the high ground at B, trying to be able to contest it just a little bit longer, just trying to take it back for themselves. And it looks like ESC is going to be able to grab it here with a nice little push coming in. But there's still two men on uh, exactly, well, actually three men that are still here um, to stop it. And this flag uh, cap has been neutralized. Yeah, it certainly has. And Zordon playing the aggressive role, trying to make sure his team can cap this one over fairly unchallenged. But look at Lagza and Kazam trying to work around the outside. Explo as well, doing the same with Jansen. And they're trying to engulf B, but it's not working. Zakwa have held on to this, that CB hold, really doing the damage here. And now Explo and Kazam, and I believe the one respawning member, will now have to do the really quick push because it's tight all even. We are seeing A actually going over to Zakwa's favor as well. So they may lose out on B unless they get these respawns in. Or Mimset can pull out something beautiful and actually Provo does win out this time and we are seeing the tri-cap coming in for Exacro. This is unbelievable play right at the end of this. They're going to hold B and C. They may lose out on A, but they already have aggressive players willing to challenge like Zordon and now joined by Provo. That was the ideal switch around there to just chip away at the opponent. And they took the lead right back from ESC, pretty much out of nowhere with just that one little bit of a play. And right now you're seeing them kind of take this advantage into this next half because they have about 25 seconds to the eight remaining on the ESC side. ESC can't really afford to get any more respawns in here, but they have to start contesting these flags. It looks like they're kind of uh, going for that last bit of a ditch effort on to B here, but they're being shut down by Probo, picking up those nice two quick kills. And that's pretty much going to do it here for this first half. Yeah, really nice setup from Exacto and B then. Once they knew where the opponent was spawning, it was literally watching them just mow them down. And this is the first time we're actually seeing uh, Exacto with the advantage and what an ideal map to do it on, on the third defining one. So going to the half with a 24 ticket advantage or, you know, you could look at a disadvantage for ESC, whichever way you prefer. Um, and plays coming out from Probo there, as you mentioned, perfect stuff. Him, Mimsek and B, stunning. I'm really curious what Kazam was doing this game because he's 8-23. That's not typically the score you see out of someone. I wonder if he was getting constant respawns, trying to give ESC some uh, advantage in some areas, but I think he was just pretty much dying for the majority of those, and it's not exactly the score you want to see have or see on any single uh, team, but I don't exactly how they are looking to come back here from a 0-1 map deficit, taking two straight and advance on to play against uh, Pyrogen in the next ma uh, the next game, but Probo, a real, real star of the game right now, 24 and 10. You even had uh, Mimi at 17 and 5. And Blade, I believe he reconnected during that game. I'm not sure exactly at what point in it, but 7-4 is not a bad scoreline either. And to be fair, he was playing safety on the roof. He was playing for the respawn, so he may not have even reconnected. He that could have true. just been playing, um, not, not a camp, but yeah, he was playing the camp. <laughs> um, playing the Jason role. Yeah. Uh, clearly vital. Uh, <laughs> clearly. Clearly. And but they, uh, they won the half. Obviously. So, guys, we are almost ready to get underway in the second half here. And if ESC drop below 24 tickets... They are out of this. We'll rather be dropping down to the lowest, but Exacto will be heading on looking good in this. And we'll be seeing not another upset. It'll be ESC if you're looking at rankings, if they win it being the upset. But this is the first time Exacto have had the advantage going in on the half here. So certainly something to keep your eyes on. And guys at home, let me know your thoughts. All 2,744 of you, make sure you tweet at myself and Jason, at They Call Me Pansy for myself, and at Jay Kaplan for my co-caster. And let me know who you think is going to win this. This is the first time we've seen Exacto with the advantage Will they be able to walk away with this? So, guys, a couple of seconds left. Where is, where's yours prediction on this one? I feel like I shouldn't give one because the last time I did, I was wrong completely. <laughs> but I can say that the better team's going to win. Thanks for that tactical insight. But yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> woo. I got to sit on the fence. It's the best way, it's the best way to go about this. All right. So, Exacto will be starting in the north side, picking up A immediately. B will probably be converted by them. They do have two players already straying towards that office section, which is a little bit easier to stay alive in. So much cover there. And already do be feeling the pain of that. Jansen not falling to the same thing, but still, he's going to spout those nades and try and reconvene when they've got backup. Lags are splitting around the side, did not have any luck. So, this should be a good two to one hold until those respawns come for you see here in favor to Exacto. 
And you saw exactly where I actually pulled out a nice little bit of a, a initial part or phase of this game because they didn't lose one single man until just now where Provo was finally uh, the man to go down here, picking up four or five kills straight off of that. And it's exactly what you want to see. They are able to uh, get that two gap, just like you said, able to get a little bit of a lead here in the second half and haven't able to lock those two down. And we're seeing ESC right now playing a little bit of the roof game that exactly was just so keen on doing in uh, earlier on. And Right now, it's obviously not working out too well for them, but they have known at C currently, but they have XPLO on top of the balloon to defend against it, and they even have Flagster coming around the far side, going in for the flank. Might be able to pull this one off, might be able to clear off the rooftop, as he does see that one man up there, but he's unfortunately not able to get the kill. Well, at minimum, they want to draw someone away from the clean setup that Exaquo uh, really do well at, at B. <laughs> So we are seeing both of those players, wow, uh, going down there. That's not the ideal way to go for a split, but we've seen it before. Once they get set up in B, Exacro can really mow them down. Between Probo, Zordon, and I believe it's Jeremy Mimsek roaming, they can do perfect stuff here. So at the moment, they are actually getting a little bit aggressive, maybe overestimating how many players we're going over towards A, and that could spell trouble here, because only really Mimsek and Zordon are left by the B site. So, you know, a couple of players are slipping through. Lagzer and Doobie doing the work. They're looking like they want to get through towards the site, but actually going straight towards B rather than hitting up the vulnerable B site. And Lax, you're going to sit around the backside of A and actually... Words are hard. Yeah, it happens. And he's going to be able to get the cap over to A here. And with a little bit of distraction, they pull off a B. It seems they, like it's worked out for ESC. And remember, they're fighting for their, their chance to stay alive here. Obviously, they could drop down a lower bracket, but you don't want to go up against against all authority as your second match of the day. And we do see actually one man over on the exact side coming from the backside of A. We'll be able to... Actually, no, he does get taken down, so he won't be able to get the cap back over. But now you're starting to see Jansen push out towards B currently. He's actually getting the cap over on it. This could be a try cap coming for ESC. Yeah, and they definitely need it. Look at those tickets already. Big difference between them at such an early stage. And Mimsek yet to die. Do you want to point that one out? He's on five to zero. Uh, really doing work by that B side. Not, not the highest fragger, but certainly doing the damage. And they've been able to retain B and actually get a good footing towards converting A. If Blade can, can, can win the one-on-one -on -one with Doobie, who's just playing the roof game as we've seen him do before. But Blade did it not too long ago as well. And now Mimsek still just about staying alive there he's surrounded by the opposition can he pick it up yes he can beautiful play from this man literally being the solo turret to lock down b and keep this one in the hands of exaquo this is perfect from that man it is a fantastic job having be, or being able to count on someone like that to be able to hold on against three people stay alive pick up the kills and get the cap over is phenomenal by him and they do get that bc hold he's actually being capped over right now by uh, jansen he was already in this position before rushing straight in Obviously, Mim was the one to get uh, the advantage, or at least the kill onto him from that. And right now, you're seeing B still be contested quite a bit. We're seeing Exaquio come in from the backside into the building, able to pick that one up here, or at least lock it down, secure it. And we're seeing two men from Exaquio committed towards C currently to hold on to this. They do pick up the two nice kills, and that does allow them to push in towards B, get this backup going on. Oh, and wow. Right now, you're seeing Zordon from a, flo a flank roll coming in, picking up two nice kills. Yeah, that was perfect. He held back the push. He wasn't playing the for the peaks. He was playing for the cross, because normally it's Probo who plays towards that uh, northwest side of the building, but you can see they're limited in numbers. Now it's going to be Mimsek and Probo to try and create enough of a crossfire to lock down the B side. We are seeing the respawns coming in, so they are doing the work they need to be done. And this is just pure cleanup. These guys are completely clinical on it. Between Zordon, Probo, and Mimsek, they've worked this one out, leaving the other two players of Seo and Blade to play those roaming roles, to do what they want, and this is ideal stuff for them. But I'm very curious to see how ESC now try and overcome it. They do have a 50 ticket lead right here, 60 remaining in the hands of uh, ESC. They need to make something happen, just like you're saying. I'm curious as well to see what they're going to go for. And then he's just pretty much sitting on top of the staircase, still staying alive here, just making sure this doesn't get capped over. And he does spot XP low, but does set it back away. He's playing really interesting because he's, he's floating around a little bit, but he's always moving. He's never in the same spot this, uh, at any given time. Well, obviously at any given time, but <laughs> and the consecutive time. But he's always running around, and that catches the other team off guard. That's how he's able to pick up that... Uh, that triple kill earlier on. Yeah, and as long as he's covering off the push with Zordon and Probo, and, and as long as he's watching their flanks, he's ideally placed. At the moment, he's left those two to just try and push B on their own. He's in a position to wait for some respawns onto him. That's exactly what's going to be coming through now, if he can stay alive long enough. But he's going to be going for the challenge out on towards that A side. Look like he wants to get that one in the bag. So he knows his play is coming up, but Doobie's done the work. He's taken him down on A. That will be going up towards ESC. They've alleviated a lot of the pressure on that B side, so they could make a counter push. But two points now up in the air. C could go either way at this point. And Kazam, he's... He's kind of had enough here. He's looking for that capital C. They, in fact, does get it, does get the kills as well. They do get the track cap that they desperately need at this point to stay alive here. They're down to 53 tickets and 24 is that magic number. Sam going to pick up a nice kill right there. Might have been able to hold on to C a little bit longer from that. And we're seeing ESC 
or sorry, Exacto, kind of in really bad positions. They're really spread across the map here. We have Seiya working towards A, where there's two men already waiting for him. We have the rest of the team working towards C, and right now we need to see, I guess, a consensus out of Exacto if they want to be able to hold on to this lead and be able to hold on into the next round. Yeah, and they've got enough tickets to play with, to be fair. They've, they've got enough to hedge their bets here. They're not going for like the all-in. Okay, we need that one side push. They're still trying to split like they normally do with Seo and a couple of others. It's not actually normally Probo, so I was kind of wrong on that. But Seo's done the job anyway. He'll be picking up A and locking that one down. They split their attention towards C. Blade now just needs to play a defensive role, keep them in place, and hopefully allow Seo with some respawns to challenge the B side. They've actually won over a lot of the one-on-ones here, so it's allowed Probo to push straight in towards them now and do some real damage on that C section because 50 tickets is not a lot when ESC are the team that if they drop below 24, they are going down to the lower half here. But this is not the ideal position for Exacto. They're not in their comfortable zone. Now they've got a chance to get towards B. Explo has to go huge here. He definitely does. And let's tag along with him, see if he can pull this one off. He's looking for that first kill, but he's actually just pretty much ditch effort onto that. He's actually going to see the man climbing that ladder, going to get the kill onto him, allow Blade, or not allow Blade to get that high ground. And now Mims, the last one alive here. And... We could actually see ESC come back here. They're down to 43 tickets. They still have enough to play with right now, but they need to cap something over quickly. Xfilo going to go to cap over to C, and we're going to see Kazam here try to hold on to B currently. Oh. And he's taken down. Big exchange there, but it's bought enough time for Lagza to get in towards that B side. So he should be able to tick this one over towards ESC's favor, and they could be getting that trip cap. And it seems that, you know, Exacto just want their comfortable, you know, flags. They're not going for the ones that are easy. Now they're going to be getting A, maybe going to slowly work towards B and work back their favor. But the point is, ESC are still very low on tickets. Unless they get these trip caps, the 2-1 to one flat out holds, they're in trouble. 24 tickets is the magic marker. When you see that shiny side of ESC drop below that marker, they are pretty much done here. And we're seeing Exacto get into that position on B. Mimsek in the place he knows you know, so well. This time, however, Kazam, Lagzer, and Jansen will hold it back and do the damage, but any more kills could really cost them this game. Yeah, you really can't afford to die anymore at, at this point, Furious. So you have to keep everyone alive. You're already down to 29 tickets. They do have that two hold. It is possible for them to come back here, but they all have to play flawlessly, and right now, they all need to really step up here. No man's really staying out for his team as being the real man to kind of carry them here. And they haven't lost a ticket in quite a while, but they have to stay alive here. They have to pick up all these kills, and it's going to be very crucial that they hold on to B at the same time. They can't even allow B to be capped over. Yeah, one big push coming in from Exacto could literally shake this whole game. We're seeing the kill starting to come in. We are seeing that push slowly but surely forming. It looks like ESC have kind of been reading from the Exacto book here, and they're just pushing in one by one. Seo and Zordon literally going in dribs and drabs, and we know that doesn't work, and that's just given easy kills to ESC, who are just about holding on here. 27 tickets left. That's one respawn basically coming through. And now Mimsek looking like he wants to get the respawns. They're looking like they want to make their hit pretty soon, but they need to make it perfectly timed. Otherwise, we will be seeing this B-side just being held on. And it's going to get close. 42 tickets. Once again, a 2-1 to one hold, and the kills going your way you know, does get worked down very quickly. And only one man has died in the past minute for ESC. The other ones have been revived, and they have to use one ticket to get the other oh. man up here. But we're going to see them finally start to fall here, and that push might have been enough. And that's definitely going to be enough, because now ESC has to respawn. And with these four men down, they can only afford to get about two up right now. And and you're seeing them start to come in, but this should be the game for Ax Exacto. Yeah, it certainly should be. They finally broke through on B with some good play coming from Mimsek, joined by the likes of Blade and Zord on 23 tickets. It's enough for the magic number to hurt, and ESC are going to be dropping down to the lows where Exacto have done the job they needed to, really well played to them. And, you know, that B hold, that B, C hold they had for so long with Mimsek going huge, mm -hmm. pretty much gave them the game there. Uh, Zord on any on 21 to 9, uh, Mimsek 17 to 7, those guys were performing so damn well that time. You can't take it away from them. I want to give credit to ESC at the end, though, because they held on for such a long time. Yeah. I mean, they had four tickets to play with, and they only lost one man in about a minute. They were able to pick up quite a few kills, but exactly, I'll give them credit for that one because they didn't rush in. Yes. They didn't realize, oh, we're really close to winning. We should just go for it. They actually grouped up. They realized we should take this cautiously and not you know, get too cocky for it, and they ended up taking the victory and advance on into play against Pyrogen. But ESC are going to be up against, against all authority. I hate saying that twice. Yeah. <laughs> I hate saying it twice, but as you can see on your screen, the brackets right there, and that's going to be very tough. I mean, against authority, that's a result we didn't really expect to come out of them. No, certainly not. Uh, exactly, we're really doing well them for themselves, but Pyrogen, credit where it's due yeah. to overcome against all authority. You know, I, I've got to say, ESC must be kicking themselves now looking at that bracket going, we had such a close game. And now we have to fence, face off against against all authority. Now, that is not what you normally expect in the lowers. 
Mm -hmm. Definitely not you, what you want. A team who's in the top four uh, is fourth position. It's just so much to overcome. Um, I definitely feel for ESC. They had a very close game towards the end then. And I can imagine they'll be going, well, why the hell didn't we just lock down B like that? You know, a little bit sooner. Earlier on. You know, it's it's every single thing slowly comes into mind. You think you have this huge um, deficit against you, but then okay, let's play calm, let's play safe. It slowly gets worked down, and we did see it getting very close towards the end. Mm -hmm. Then, but end of the day, it doesn't matter if we got close. The winner obviously walks away with the advantage going through the upper bracket side. We'll be watching that game next. So. I don't even dare to predict the outcome of these brackets because let's not you know, take it away from against authority. They're down to the lowest, but they're certainly not out of this game. They can happily go through that if you go through off previous results. I want to know what happened in their games as well. I'm yeah. really curious. I mean, I, maybe the admins can tell us in a little bit when we ask them in, in Skype, but I don't know, just for them to get too old like that, when we saw them play in cut number three and how phenomenally well they played drunks and Raiden, you were saying before, the two men, if they step up, they're really a hard team to beat. Maybe they unfortunately didn't. Maybe there's problems. Yep. Maybe the map pool wasn't exactly what they wanted. But obviously, that's all questions we can't really get answered right away. But we're going to see them uh, potentially playing later on in the last match if they do yes. end up beating ESC. Well, we can only wait and find out. So, guys, we're going to go to a very quick break. So do not go anywhere. Maybe you know, put you know a cup of tea on if you are English, because apparently no one else in the world drinks tea apart nope. from English people. Uh, don't you know have any spaghetti bolognese or anything with red sauce or tomatoes. Pour some Mountain Dew for yourself. Wow. All right. Wow.